Um, let's do another one. This is, um, let's see, that's a hyperboloid, isn't it? Um, and it's a hyperboloid of one sheet uh, because no matter what choice I have for x, I'm still going to see an elliptical cross section of these. Have you noticed that this, the ellipses that we see are stretched a little bit more in the y direction because we have y squared over 4 in the graph? Let's just do it with implicit plot 3D and see what we get. Implicit plot 3D, x squared plus 1 equals z squared plus y squared over 4. And let's see, we can let x go from, um, we ought to do at least maybe like negative negative 4 to 4. Huh? Z can go from, oh, maybe negative 1 to 1. But y is wider. Let's let y go from negative 2 to 2. I'm thinking that um, this, this extra latitude in, in the y direction is going to be kind of handy. Well, yeah, okay, that should work, right? So let's, I uh, typed something wrong. No, I misspelled implicit plot. Implicit plot 3D. Oops. Oh, I can see I didn't set my ranges quite wide enough to see much of this uh, hyperboloid of two sheets. I see what I did. Um, let me widen out the range I consider in Z and Y. Oh, no, I guess I'm limited by the X values that I can see, huh? So rather than do that, let me widen out my X values. Hmm. Wouldn't hurt to go negative 10 to 10. Now what do I see? Mm. That's a little interesting. Hmm, what's going on there? Implicit plot is having a hard time with my with my graph for some reason. Hmm. I guess I can see it's a hyperboloid of two sheets, but it's not really doing a really smooth job of this of plotting this. Um, so maybe the problem is just in trying to use implicit plot. Let me try, um, I could take this equation and I could solve for um, one of the variables as a function of the others. Let's see, why don't I solve for x as a function of the other variables? If you do that, um, we had x squared plus 1 equals y squared plus z squared. So, um, don't mean to run that as a command, I'm just sort of typing here. Let me change, I'm going to go up to edit and choose, uh, oh, go up to insert and make this uh, just text. There we go. Okay, so x squared plus 1 equals y squared plus z squared. That would mean x is either the plus or minus square root of y squared plus z squared minus 1. So those are the those are the two choices for x y squared plus z squared minus one. Let me let me graph those instead. Let's see. Hmm. I need to insert now some maple input. So control M should do that. Is it already maple input? Maybe so. All right. Well. Anyway, I think I've got an input window here. I'm going to do implicit plot 3D. And uh, the first equation I'll do is, oh, I don't think I solved that quite as I intended. Wasn't there a y squared over 4 in the problem? Yeah, there was. OK, so this should be y squared over 4 in the problem. Let's let uh, z go from negative, negative 1 to 1. Hmm, let's go further. Let's go from negative 4 to 4. I'll let y go from uh, negative 4 to 4. Let's see what we get with that plot. Error in plots. Invalid input. Oh, it's not an implicit plot anymore. I solved for one of the variables, so I should be using the command plot 3D. There we go. Yeah, that's not, that's not too bad. Huh? Notice the the stretch here in that one. This should kind of have a neck that goes down, so we're missing that in our implicit plot 3D error in our plot 3D. It's getting, it's going kind of vertical on us, and so we're missing some of those points. 
I, I could still make uh, two plots. Maybe I call this one plot one and suppress the output. And plot two, suppress the output. For plot two, I'm going to use the negative sign in front of the square root. Get my two plots here. Uh, suppress the output and then use the display command to show P1 and P2 together. And we should put some axes on there. Axes equal normal would be nice. Okay, so we've got our, our axes on the graph. Now this should be just a smooth, it should just kind of flow smoothly through that center region, but it's not because the surface is getting kind of vertical. So implicit plot 3D didn't work too well. Um, here was the result with the implicit plot. Huh? Um, this pretty simple graph wasn't picking up much of the detail. We're getting more detail here by making two separate plots and using using plot 3D to make two separate plots and display them together. Um, what might be better for us to do be just to use another technique, maybe as a parametric surface, which we can talk about later on. So um, we'll come back to this problem when we've learned a little bit more about about graphing. Let's see. Here's another hyperboloid. Um, this is a hyperboloid of uh, two sheets, right? Because for certain values of y, we don't see anything, and so we're expecting a hyperboloid of two sheets. Um, let's try to do. Um, yeah, let's try to do this. Let's solve for z actually. Let's use plot 3D and solve this for z. See how we do. So I only get part of it. I'm going to solve for. Uh, well, I don't know. Let's see what implicit plot 3D does. Implicit, implicit plot 3D, y squared minus 1 equals x squared plus z squared. Um, x equal um, what? Negative 2 to 2. Uh, z equal negative 2 to 2. Um, y is going to have to be at least 1, so have, yeah, let's do y equal negative 2 2. That'll work there. Yeah, that wasn't too bad. We, we see our, our two sheets there. Yeah, that's pretty good. We could probably get something smoother if we created two, two separate plots here. So if I take what we've got, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just copy what we've got, but instead of using um, implicit plot, I'm going to write one variable as a function of the others and graph it that way. So plot 3D, I can solve for um, y as a function of x and y. I just add 1 over here and then take the square root. And we've got y, y alone here. So I can just plot that function. And let me throw some axes on there. Axes equal normal. Let's look at that. Okay. Ooh, that's going to look nicer, isn't it? That's that's just our our upper sheet. To do the the lower sheet in this hyperbola, we need to make a second plot where we put in the negative square root. Now to get these to display together, I'm going to give them names. Maybe I call this one P1 again, and that one can be P2. Um, that's going to overwrite the overwrite the the plot that I had already stored as P1 and P2. I'm going to suppress the output and display those two together. So display P1 and P2 together. Oh, okay. Now we get a better look at our two sheets. That's a lot smoother than than what we got with the implicit plot 3D. Right? Similar thing, but but smoother. Um, in this way, it's it's a little bit faster with Maple and a little bit better because we have um, we have a, we have a range, and then what Maple does is it's just going to um, it's going to choose every you know several any any location within this range it can choose and plug it in to get the y value. Versus before, in the implicit plot 3D, it was searching throughout this range for combinations of x x y and z that actually solved the problem and then it was connecting them up with the surface. It just didn't do as smooth a job for that reason. It's just more work for it to search around and do that. Ah, these ones would be uh, easy to plot since uh, this is an elliptic paraboloid. Okay? And um, 
since z is already a function of x, it's, we can get a really nice plot with just plot 3D for this one. So we'll just put in x squared plus y squared and put a range on x maybe from negative 1 to 1, y equal negative 1 to 1. And boom, there's our, our um, elliptic paraboloid. If I right click and choose um, change the style to contour, you can sort of you can see the ellipses right as the contours. This is what you get when you slice it with planes of constant z. That's kind of fun. Let's also do um, hyperbolic paraboloid. So z equals x squared minus y squared. Let's plot 3D x squared minus y squared. Just put a range on x's that makes sense. Um, negative 1 to 1 for x and negative 1 to 1 at y equal negative 1 to 1 for y. There we go. Hmm. Okay, so we see our our saddle, right? This is our hyperbolic parabola. If you look this way, you can see the parabola is up. If you look this way, you can see the parabola is down. Uh, it might have been nice to include some axes on here. I'll just right click and choose axes normal. Yeah, so you can see in the in the uh, this is the x-axis. The problem had um, let's see. Oh, is that the x-axis? It's not really displaying the axis labels very nicely for me. Uh, one thing that you that you come into um, with Maple is is uh, whether or not the perspective is stretched. Now this. This one is kind of uniform in both directions, but if I were to put maybe a 2 in front of this y squared and plot it, you usually can't tell that that much has changed. Um, sometimes it's helpful to, to change, to set the scaling here. So if we go to, let's see, where is it at? Um, oh, oh, projection, yeah. Under this projection menu, you can set it to be constrained. Normally, Maple just kind of, uh, makes it fill the box so it will stretch the axes automatically but if you force it to have the correct proportions to the axes that that's nice you can also pass this command um, scaling equal constrained before you draw the plot so then you don't have to right click to, to, to make the scaling constrained it will automatically do it so you can see because I had this I put a 2 in front of the y squared then then the ellipses or the parabola is in the y direction have that natural stretch which wasn't there before because Maple was just kind of rescaling the axes so that it would fit the box. Oh, our last one here is our ellipsoid. So for our ellipsoid um, we could use implicit plot 3D implicit plot 3D um, our equation is x squared over 4 x squared over 4 plus y squared over 9 plus z squared equal 1. Um, some good ranges here. Let's see. x can go between negative 2 and 2 because of the over 4. But y can, can go between negative 3 and 3. z can only go between negative 1 and 1. That's sort of its maximum values because the sum of all those has to turn out to be 1. So I'll put the plot 3D. comes out looking like a sphere. And the problem is, again, the fact that the that that Maple just tries to change the, the scaling so that the graph will fill up the box that it's got. But if I choose projection and then constrained, now we can actually see. I should have put some axes on here. So choose axes. Uh, just normal would work. Oh, I can't see those very well. Let me choose axes equal boxed. Now we've got our axes. Okay, so you can see that it's stretched most in the y direction. That's because of the 9 underneath the y squared. Uh, then it's stretched, stretched a little bit more uh, than z in the x direction because of the 4 underneath the x and then the z range goes from negative 1 to 1. So if we, use, if we use scaling equal constraint then we can actually see the proportions of that shape. Okay, so that's plotting with maple. We can, um, so far we can use implicit plot 3D and plot 3D in order to plot these quadratic surfaces. We'll come back when we talk about parametric surfaces and, and uh, and do some better plots for these.